Hello, my name is Kevin Cleary and I am the ESD Packaging Specialist for Static Control Solutions. Today we're going to discuss the differences between low charging anesthetic poly bags and metallized static shielding bags. With the components in the world today getting smaller and smaller, it's more important that we are protecting our products from any type of static discharge and uh, we just want to make sure that everybody is in tune to what is expected per S2020. So S2020, as most people know, is the uh, primary standard put out by the ESD Association and it covers the protection of electronic, electrical and electronic parts assemblies. If you're following S2020, then S541 also is very important to you. So it covers all of your packaging uh, materials and called out in that is a uh, static shielding test which is uh, 1131 which we'll get to. Also there is uh, ANSI ESD Association puts out S11.4. S11.4 is specific to static control bags where 541 covers all planar materials and packing materials in general. So in S541 it also calls out 1131 as a shielding test with a requirement of less than 20 nanojoules. So all that's going to come together when we do the test on our ETS equipment here in the lab. So one of the major differences that I want to point out is pink poly is typically a transparent, so a lot of people like that. Um, the problem is it offers no shielding value. So when we test this, you'll see that there is no actual ESD shielding as opposed to the SCS static shielding bag. Unlike pink poly bags, static shielding bags protect components from direct voltage both inside and outside the EPA. The SD Association standard S541 deals specifically with packaging materials for ESD sensitive items. A key change took place in 2018. In S541 2018, shielding requirements were lowered from less than 50 nanojoules to a requirement of less than 20 nanojoules. We will now use the ANSI ESD STM 11.31 test method to demonstrate the differences. We are now testing the pink poly bag in accordance to S1131. As you can see, I'm inserting the pink poly bag in the ETS capacitance probe, caught out by S1131. Once the latch is closed, we'll go to the ETS software and engage to start a series of six charges per bag of a thousand volts each. You can see the rise in voltage and then the slow decay with a residual of over 300 volts or nanojoules in this bag. So the inner capacitance probe is picking up 300 plus nanojoules of energy passing through the layers of a pink poly bag. We will now do the same for a static shielding bag. Again, we will hit this six times per the standard with 1,000 volts or one kilovolt. The ETS chamber has been conditioned at 73 degrees Fahrenheit and 12% relative humidity for a minimum of 48 hours. We will engage the software. The very top waveform is a test waveform. Again, caught out by 1131. The remaining six will be the individual charges placed on the bag. And again, the capacitance probe on the inside of the bag is picking up the remaining energy and these bags are average around 5.5 nanojoules which is well below the less than 20 nanojoule requirement called out by S1131. So what are the differences between low charging pink poly and metallized static shielding bags? 
Pink poly bags are made out of a polyethylene and are translucent with a pink tint. They are low charge and being an additive that typically blooms to the surface and eventually expires, making the bag insulative. Metallized shielding bags are metallized polyester and a low charging polyethylene laminate. The metal layer provides a shielding layer and therefore a Faraday cage effect, protecting the contents from direct voltage being induced onto the board. The low charging inner and outer layers prevent tribocharging from occurring. So what did we learn? Low charging pink poly is a low charging poly bag that exhibits no shielding value and therefore no discharge shielding protection or Faraday cage. External charges can penetrate the bag and impact the component. They offer lower durability and they will become insulative over time. They are not compliant with S541 outside of the EPA.